Welcome back to the Dreadful Night Podcast. My name is Charlotte, and I've always been obsessed with stories about things that go bump in the night. And I figured, why not try to start a podcast where I go in-depth with these stories and try to find out the truth behind them. Tonight, we'll be talking about the Lizzie Borden axe murders, where Abby and Andrew Borden, Lizzie Borden's parents, were both brutally murdered. Did Lizzie finally have enough of her family's ways, or is there a more sinister plot involved? Tonight, I'm also joined by my very special guest, Sugary. Sugary, hey, how are you? Hello. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So, Sugary, what's your opinion on Lizzie Borden before we get into the actual scene of the crime and what all happened? Um, I think it's an interesting story. Mm -hmm. I think that there's enough information on both sides, either Mm -hmm. to say that she did do it or to say that she didn't do it. Yeah, and I would agree with you on that. I think that a lot of the evidence is very circumstantial. A lot of it very heavily relies upon what other people have said, and a lot of it's he said, she said. So to sort it out and to just kind of give it a fresh slate, let's get into the facts of the actual crime itself. So at the Borden family home, Lizzie lived with her father, Andrew, stepmother, Abby, sister, Emma, and their live-in maid, Bridget Sullivan, also nicknamed Maggie. Prior to the crime occurring, tensions were already high in the household. And because of this, about a month before the crime occurred, both Lizzie and Emma had gone on an extended vacation. So flash forward about a month to August the 3rd, 1892. Lizzie and Emma Borden's uncle, John Morse, arrives at the home for a visit, and he stays the night. The next morning, August the 4th, all of the family, except for Emma, who was supposedly staying with a friend at the time, sat and ate breakfast. Now, John and Andrew, after breakfast, have a discussion for a little while in the sitting room, and around 8.48 in the morning, they both leave within minutes of each other. Andrew decided he was going to go for his morning walk, and John planned to go out and purchase some oxen and visit one of his nieces in town. Now, during this time, Abby goes to clean the guest bedroom where John had been staying. It was a little bit unusual for her to actually clean the guest bedroom because normally that was left to both Lizzie and Emma. While she's up there, somebody comes up the stairs and murders her. She's first struck on the side of the head with a hatchet-like object, which knocks her face down on the ground. She's then struck another 17 times in the back of the head. A little after 10, Andrew goes to return home from his walk. Now, he tries to open up the front door and it said that his key wasn't working and that the maid, Maggie, actually had to come to try to help him unlock the door. So he gets into the house and he asks Lizzie where Abby is. She says that at some point during that morning when he was walking around, a courier had come by and delivered a note to Abby that said one of Abby's friends was sick and Abby decided to go visit her. So hearing this, Andrew says, well, okay, I guess she's off visiting this friend. So he decides he's going to lay down on the couch and have a nap. So while he's sleeping on the couch, he gets hit around a dozen times in the head with this hatchet-like object. A little while later, Lizzie walks into the sitting room and finds her father there murdered. She immediately hollers to Maggie, who's upstairs sleeping, And she comes down the stairs, and they both say, oh, my God, Andrew's dead. And the maid goes upstairs and finds Abby and says, oh, my God, even Abby's dead, too. She's here laying face down in the guest bedroom. So an investigation is immediately launched, and Lizzie becomes the prime suspect of the investigation. And the only reason she's even found to be a suspect is because of the fact that they found a drop of blood on one of her dresses um, while they were conducting their search of the house. Now, it's written off, though, because she says that she was on her monthly, so that's why there was this, like, single drop of blood on her dress. Um, But nothing else is really found. They see, like, a couple hatchets downstairs, but nobody takes any of those in as what could be possibly a murder weapon. It just felt like the entirety of the actual investigation was just poorly conducted. So they go to trial, and Lizzie is charged with the murder of her parents. Um, but is acquitted due to the fact that there was basically no evidence um, or no concrete evidence there. 
Now, during the trial and the investigation, Lizzie's story changes several times. And this is in part due to, or what was believed due to the fact that she'd been given morphine um, and that she maybe couldn't remember the full picture or her memory was failing her a little bit. But on top of that as well, she just seemed unusually calm. So after the trial, she's acquitted and she decides to move out of her family's home and she moves in with her sister Emma into another large house called Maplecroft. And she lives there with her sister for years and years until the sister finally decides to move out and then they both die. Her maid, Maggie, just kind of like disappears after the trial. It's said that not too much is known about where she went, but it is said that she ended up in some part of Minnesota and had been married to another man named John Sullivan. Um, her uncle, John Morse, not too much is known about his whereabouts after the fact either, and nobody really knows what came of him. Sugary, what are you thinking on this? I think even the order of events is under suspicion because the only ones to verify it are the people that were possibly guilty of conspiracy either during or after the fact. There was no extenuating witnesses, no third party witnesses that said, hey, by the way, I saw Andrew on the walk or hey, by the way, I saw John go to buy this oxen. There was nobody else around except for these family members and the maid um, to really say, yes, this is, you know, what happened. I saw this person here. Anybody to, there was nobody really to validate or make the alibis of John or Emma or Lizzie or the maid concrete. There's, there's nobody there to verify that. Um, Sugary, what do you think of, though, for the murders themselves? Do you think Lizzie is the one that could have been you know, she could have been the one to actually do them, or? I think that it it's highly likely. Mm -hmm. I, I think she did it. Mm -hmm. If not both of them, I feel like she did at least one. Mm -hmm. Both of them being who? Her stepmom and her dad. Even if she didn't kill both of them, I think mm -hmm. that she at least killed the stepmom. Mm-hmm. And that's just a feeling like there's mm -hmm. nothing, there's, there's nothing factual to back that up. I think that's just because it's overwhelmingly obvious that she always hated her stepmom. Mm -hmm. And I it mean, feels like the anger directed at her dad was um, temperamental and off and on, depending on what he gave her when. Mm -hmm. I mean, even... In, in saying, you know, she had not really liked her stepmother, they didn't even call her mom or Abby or anything. They called her Mrs. Borden. And yeah. it was always thought that, it was always thought by um, Lizzie and by her sister Emma that the only reason Abby even married their father was for his money. Because he was a property developer. He became pretty successful. They lived in an upscale neighborhood. They had quite a bit of money, and at Lizzie's death, she was worth around $5 million. Well, in today's money, what would be considered $5 million. So there was obviously some sort of plot of money going on here. In my personal opinion, looking at all of the evidence that's you know, laid out, I think that there's no telling if it wasn't just the maid or if it wasn't just Lizzie or it wasn't just her sister or the uncle, I think it could have been a coup between all of the people. I think that what could have happened is maybe the uncle never left that morning. Maybe Andrew never left the house that morning. Maybe they got up that yeah. next morning, ate breakfast, and Andrew went to go take a nap on the couch, and that's when he was killed. And Abby went upstairs to the guest bedroom for whatever random reason, not to clean the guest bedroom but she just went up there for whatever reason and gets killed up there and then maybe during the point of where the crimes occurred to the point of where the investigators came that's when john and emma leave the house because even looking at the amount of times each person was hit says that it's a crime of passion 
You don't yeah. just go like you don't break into somebody's what, house and hit them seven times. What if he took a nap? They weren't autopsy, were they? I believe what that they he... did an autopsy, but it wasn't to the extent that an autopsy nowadays would have been conducted. There was no like well, toxicology. Because what if done. he took a nap because he was drugged? You know, I was thinking that as well. So an interesting thing to note is that about a week before these murders occurred, right, is when both Lizzie and um, Emma get back from their vacation. So they come back to the house, and around that day, the next day, is when the entire household is sick. And they think it's from, like, mutton that had been left out on the counter, but Abby expressed concerns that they could have been poisoned. So let's say that both Lizzie and Emma are on this vacation and they plot like, okay, this is it. Like when we come back, we've been talking about this. We don't really like them whatsoever. We're going to come back. We're going to kill them. I'm going to go to the store, buy some poison, poison them. So what if she tries to poison them like that next day or that night that they arrive, but it doesn't work. It just makes them very sick. And then, because it's even said that the day before they're murdered, Lizzie went to a local store to purchase um, this this rat poison. And what did she say that the rat poison was for? Like, what did she, why did she go to the store and, and buy this to begin with? Or try she tried to? to get prussic acid, uh -huh. which she said she wanted to use to clean a seal skin cape. Right. So, and, and then they didn't give said. it to her, right? Correct. So. And why wouldn't they give it to her? Exactly. That's what doesn't make any sense. Because if you were to purchase this supposedly very highly toxic chemical. So if you were to purchase this very highly toxic poison a week prior and then a week later you go back for more, wouldn't people think like, hang on a sec, why are you buying this stuff? Maybe they had some sort of limit on it. Because... If the day before they're murdered, she tries to buy this poison, and she can't buy it. And then the next day, they're killed with a hatchet. And the week prior, they're all sick with something. Wouldn't it make sense that the household gets sick for a week? It could have been Lizzie and Emma that could have Try, pretended they were sick or whatever. Her trying to buy that poison the night before was kept out of the records. See? That just because furthers it, though. The the judge said that mm -hmm. it wasn't coincidental enough. How was that not coincidental enough? Because they were killed with an axe, supposedly. I don't know. I still think it goes to motive, mm -hmm. but I... Because it was the day before. Right. Like, okay, maybe a week before, mm -hmm. but what if, what if it was a clerical error and he thought they meant the poison that she purchased a week ago? Because they didn't have a record of the poison she tried to buy because she was denied. So maybe it was a clerical error. And the judge thought that they meant the poison that she did buy a week ago. That would have been too long ago to... Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it could have been, oh, well, she bought poison a week prior. But what if yes. when she tried to poison them, it didn't work? Like, it just made them very sick. Yes. Because even Abby expressed concerns that they had been poisoned. Not, oh, I've got food poisoning. No, I think I've been yeah. poisoned. And then the day before, you know, Lizzie, probably after that week, everybody started to feel better. So she's like, okay, I'm going to go buy more poison. But now I'm going to, like. Double the dose. Yeah, I'm going to double the <laughs> dose. Like, I'm going to go, I'm going to kill them this time. Um, but she can't get it. So then the next day she's just like, fuck it, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna kill them now. Let's, let's take a look for a second at the timeline. The uncle comes, he stays the night before. Him and Andrew have a discussion that morning. They both leave, this is when Abby dies. The maid is there. You're gonna tell me the maid did not hear somebody being bludgeoned in the head. And now, if you look at the crime scene photos, these are deep cuts. These break the skull deep cuts. You're going to tell me the maid, Maggie, does not hear somebody being bludgeoned 17 times. Let alone if there was an initial, like, shout or something. Because Maggie even said she was at the house, but that she was cleaning windows when Abby got murdered. 
How, like, how is that she a thing? She probably had her iPod in and <laughs> wasn't paying attention. This is 1892. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have iPods. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, it, this is, so how do you not, and the house is not that big. If you look at photos of this house, it is not that large. There is no way you can't hear somebody being bludgeoned, a body falling to a floor. There's no way you can't hear somebody falling to the floor and being bludgeoned 17 times and not go, hmm, what is, what is that noise? What is that? Um, now. It gets none of my business. I'm not going to worry about it. I, I, I mean, she'd be the perfect horror movie survivor out of anybody. She's just like, nope, nope, not for me. I'm just going to keep cleaning these windows. <laughs> I didn't see nothing. I didn't, I didn't see nothing. Hear nothing. I didn't, nope. Um, I don't know I don't anything. Know what's going- <laughs> I'm not a snitch. <laughs> <laughs> this is fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. And the thing is, is this. So she, obviously the, this scuffle happens. Maggie says she doesn't hear anything. She's too busy cleaning. Lizzie, she doesn't even say like where she is. She just basically says she's in another room. Like she has no idea. And her room is down the hall. If you look at the floor plan, her room is down the hall. So you're going to tell me she didn't hear anything and she lives down the hallway either, you know? Um, now, when Andrew comes in, or when he supposedly comes back from his walk, he doesn't go upstairs to go check on anything. Like, he doesn't go to, to snoop about on the second floor whatsoever. Ab, or Maggie's upstairs cleaning the windows. And she doesn't happen upon the body. So for this hour and a half after Abby supposedly is dead, lying just dead on the ground, blood pooling around her, nobody sees her body. Nobody even looks in the guest bedroom to to see this body. So Andrew comes in, he just lays down on the couch, and he's like chilling, taking a nap. And that's when he's murdered. And then Lizzie's like, oh my god, I just walked into the sitting room and he was there, dead. Maggie, oh Maggie, please come down the stairs and witness the fact that my father is dead on this couch. Like, it doesn't make any sense. And then Maggie says by the time the father was murdered, she was upstairs sleeping. Like, taking a nap. And her room is on the third floor. So, if you, and you look at the layout of the house, so there's stairs to get up to the third floor. But you're going to tell me at no point did she wander on the second floor before she went straight upstairs. I feel like Maggie is very suspect in this. Lizzie's obviously suspect in this. And then Emma just so happens to be at the same time, like, staying with a friend type thing. And John is out buying oxen, which could never be verified. It just, it doesn't make any sense. It's, it's a little, it's a little too vague. It's not substantiated. Why didn't they get more people's? statements that's my thing though as well it's they didn't go to collect people's statements like any of the neighbors they didn't go to collect their statements they didn't go to um whoever the sister was staying with yeah they didn't go to go get statements they didn't go to okay well john where did you go to buy this oxen at who saw you can you verify your alibi they didn't do that they didn't even take the supposed they just noted down in the book that um there was a hatchet among like these other hatchets and axes that were downstairs in the basement that one of them had a broken handle and that one of them had like less dust on it like it looked like it had been used recently that's all that they noted but they couldn't find blood anywhere except for blood around the bodies and blood um a blood around the bodies and then like a drop of blood on one of lizzie's dresses they didn't really question lizzie that much they uh, didn't go and, like, do a full-on review of the house and do, like, a whole-ass search of the house. They didn't do any of that. Um, and the only reason they even found, like, a drop of blood on one of Lizzie's dresses is because they just randomly searched one of the chest, um, chests, uh, in her room. So, and she the just wrote it off. The timeline is off even more than, than we believe it to be, mm-hmm. saying that, that the whole breakfast thing never happened, mm-hmm. then I find it hard to believe that the broken hatchet was the correct hatchet. Mm-hmm. Because how long would it take to get blood out of the broken wood? Like, mm-hmm. if, the, if the hatchet's broke, mm-hmm. that means there's wood, and wood would soak up blood. 
Mm-hmm. So wouldn't they have to like I'd soak it in? I would imagine lye they or would. Something. Yeah, you would have to soak the blood and like bleach. You would, or you would have to soak the hatchet and like. That's bleach what I mean. I don't think something. that it could be done within a couple hours. Yeah, unless I don't, I don't think that the, mm-hmm. if that was the murder weapon. Yeah. I don't think it would be able to be cleaned of blood within a couple hours. Is what I mean. Yeah, and there's no telling in between the amount of time that the murder supposedly took place and they went to go get authorities. There's no telling how much evidence they were going to be able to hide. They could have put the hatchet or the supposed hatchet anywhere, you know? Um, yeah. They could have done anything with with those tools. They could have put it wherever they wanted to. I mean, hell, she could have probably wrapped it in a dress and the investigators wouldn't have found it, you know? It's like everything is just so well thought out and like covered up and the fact that the authorities didn't really even question them to begin with makes me think this either the authorities were paid off like the people actually investigating were paid off or that lizzie was like the number one suspect and they actually found more evidence but they left a lot of it out because of the time frame they didn't want uh people to realize that a woman was capable of such an occurrence because remember, this is 1892. I think it was a combination. I, I think it was a combination. Yeah, I mean, this is 1892. It's the middle of women's suffrage. Oh, it can't be her. Because even in the records, didn't it say, like, th- they believe that she was too dainty and docile to be to be able to commit such an atrocious act? Yeah, well, um, not the newspapers the Mm -hmm. next day Mm -hmm. said um the only person that the government can catch is one whose very innocence placed her in its power the poor defenseless child who ought to have claimed by her very helplessness their protection so the the paper the newspapers are Mm -hmm. stating her innocence because she's a woman and see, that's my thing as well, is that, do you think it was because of the fact that they automatically put out that she was innocent because of the fact that she's a woman, so that swayed the court somehow? You know, it, it could have swayed the judge, like, oh, it can't be this woman. What? How would this woman kill another person? Like, a woman couldn't do something like this. A woman couldn't kill um, her parents with a hatchet. If anything, I she think... could, like, poison them, but she wouldn't be capable of this. I don't think that the... I don't think mm-hmm. that the the police were paid off. Okay. I think that it was an unfortunate turn of events. Mm-hmm. Um, the things that happened from point A to the end mm-hmm. are very reminiscent of the John Bonet Ramsey case. They don't want to believe that someone mm-hmm. could do that to someone they love. Mm-hmm. And because they were not rich but more affluent they were treated a little better maybe and given more leeway i i think that had something to do with it they didn't Mm -hmm. take the evidence right away they didn't even though they named the axe they didn't take it with them right somebody seen her burning a dress three days later Mm -hmm. and she said it was because it had paint on it so Mm -hmm. the fact that that wasn't taken they didn't it just feels like they were treating her with kids' gloves. Yeah. And I think that was because of her station mm-hmm. and because she was a woman. So you think that it was because of the fact that the police, the investigators, they couldn't even picture her capable of uh, of an act like, like they this, so they wrote it, it off. They thought it, but yeah. they were like, no, that's not possible. Right. Like, even if they thought it, mm-hmm. like, okay, this is the only explanation, yeah. there was also that, oh, well, that's not possible. There's yeah. no way. Mm-hmm. So do you yeah. think that she was the one that actually murdered her family? Do you think it was just her and then the maid was so out of it and so not even like knowing what was no, going on i don't think the maid it. killed anybody uh-huh. but i definitely think that she might have been paid off okay 
I, I feel like she knew, if not before, then definitely after the fact. Mm -hmm. And maybe she was paid off later. Mm -hmm. Because that that's too suspicious for me. Yeah. But I don't I don't feel like the maid told them. I don't feel like she had a reason. I think she was just complicit just by association. Mm -hmm. I think the uncle might have had something. Yeah, and I mean... And we don't know what happened to him after. Yeah. And did he get any money from anybody or... I mean... This, it's never said. Yeah, exactly. Like, the uncle, he... Nothing is really said of where he went or what happened to him after the fact. The maid, same thing. We didn't know until recent years when the grandniece of the maid, Bridget Sullivan, a.k.a. Maggie... Uh, sent the manager of the Lizzie Borden bed and breakfast pictures of her grandmother in her 70s. And she said that she lived over in Minnesota. She might have also at one point gone back to Ireland, but she for sure um, started a family, got married, and lived in Minnesota. So it's it's just kind of strange to me because you don't really hear anything of what happened to the uncle. You don't really hear anything of what happened to the maid. And then you just know that Lizzie and her sister, like, lived in another house. I just, I just feel like maybe, so in my personal opinion, what I think happened, the only person I can't place is the uncle, like, what his involvement was. But the only thing I can think of is, is that they must have died recently. Like, they have, must have died, like, at some point that morning. But what I think is that Lizzie could have definitely killed the stepmother, or John could have, because she went to go clean the guest bedroom, and that's where John was staying at. So either Lizzie or the uncle could have killed the stepmother. I think that Lizzie or the uncle could have killed Andrew while he was asleep, and the maid probably knew about it, like, the night prior, or, like, that very morning, and she just got paid off, like, hey, keep quiet, and, you know, we'll give you money type thing. I think that Emma and Lizzie already knew, like, what they had planned to do. I don't feel like Emma was the one to commit it because of the fact that Emma was, like, Emma said that she was at another house. Like, Emma didn't say that she was there. So I feel like Lizzie's the one that was directly involved with the crime. Um... But I definitely think that Emma knew about it prior, Maggie knew about it prior, and that the uncle, it just, it's so coincidental that the uncle stays the night prior. The only thing I can think of is that when Lizzie and Emma were on this vacation and they were so mad at their parents, they at some point, the uncle had been living in Rhode Island, that while they were on this vacation, their uncle came to visit them or they visited their uncle and come up and, and, and came up with this plot to kill their parents. Like, hey, come into town and say that you're, you know, just visiting or something. And then we're going to kill the parents and we'll give you some of the money. We'll give Maggie some of the money and then that'll be it. Right. And we'll just, then nobody's going to suspect it's us. Like you, I'll say that you were gone there's no way that they would believe that a woman would kill the people. Uh, there's no way that they would believe that a woman would kill, you know, their parents. There's no way that a woman could pull this off. So I'll say that you weren't at the house. And then Maggie's just like, well, I don't know what happened. Lizzie's like the only one that was walking around. And Lizzie's like, I, I was just in my room. Like, I didn't know what happened. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> nobody knows what happened, but what? Yeah. Well, you know, we're we're in other rooms, but it's okay. We're just women. We don't know anything. Yeah, we're just women. We don't know anything. I, I think that would be the perfect way to commit the crime, though, too. If you think about it, 1892, in the middle of women's suffrage, they play the, oh, I'm a woman. There's no way I'm capable of this card. They which do. the police play this same thing. Like, oh, yes, they're just very dainty women. They couldn't possibly conspire to commit such an they're atrocious crime. They're not smart crime. enough or strong enough. Yeah. So they played the card extremely well and got off on it. And they got all of this money. Um, again, like Lizzie in nowadays time would be worth $5 million at her death, which means she's probably worth even more prior to that. But, you know, living expenses and all this other stuff. So 
I mean, yeah, I think that's probably more than likely what happened. She paid off the maid, she paid off the uncle, and then went and was like, okay, we're going to get rid of him some which away. Because keep in mind, at the time these murders occurred, Lizzie was 32 years old. Her sister yeah. was like 41, 42. Yeah. So what I think ended up happening is, is what like kind of motivated it is probably the fact that the father and the stepmother really didn't like them still living with them. You know, they were like, you're 30 something years old, you're 40 something years old. Why don't y'all have husbands? Why don't y'all have a family of your own? Why do you still live with us type thing? Because both the stepmother and the father are probably getting Taking ready to retire. Your allowance away. <laughs> yeah, like we're going to take your allowance away. You know, like, we, you know, we're tired of it. We want to retire. And y'all, it's like that movie, The Step Brothers. You know what I'm saying? They're kind of like that. They probably were um, tired of them living there. They were probably tired of putting up with them and all of these tensions and said, we're going to get rid of them. Like, you're going to move out of the house type thing. And that's what they did. I think Lizzie was a lot smarter than what the media gave her credit for. I think her and her sister were a lot smarter than than how they were portrayed in this entire story. The fact that um, scientists were saying that women were less intelligent and weaker and Lizzie playing that card for all it was worth. I, I think that the courts were like, well, if we say that she's guilty, then we're saying that all these scientists who say that women are weaker and less intelligent are wrong. I -hmm. think that had a lot to do with it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think they just played right into that. Like, this is how we get off on, this is how we get off on committing murder. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to the second episode of the Dreadful Night podcast. And I hope to see you all next week. Have a great day.